2 Samuel chapter 1. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, dead, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, they were supposed to be dead by Saul. That's a particular name in this chapter. And David had abode two days in Ziklag. And I gave you that map. When David conquered the Amalekites, he went back to Ziklag with his family. That map shows you, man, they are as far as from north to south from each other. That's another thing that's going to come up in this chapter. There's no way to say that David killed Saul. And came, it came even to pass on the third day, maybe on the third day keeps showing up, that behold, a man came out of the camp of Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head, sadness, destruction. We are made, the Jews know they were made by God, they're made out of dirt. They're putting ourselves back under the dirt where we were. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. And David said unto him, From whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. They were losing and lost the war. And David said, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he said that the people are fled from the battle. We read that chapter 31. They're running. No victory in Israel. And many of the people are also fallen dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. It's funny, it doesn't mention the other sons of Saul. Just Jonathan. And David said unto the young man that told him, how knowest that Saul and Jonathan, his son, were to be dead? And the young man that told him, saying, I, as I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa. And that's that map I gave you. David never went up there, but here this young man goes from Mount Gilboa all the way down to Ziglag to tell David that the king and his son is dead. And mentioning only Jonathan, you would assume that he knew the relationship between Jonathan and David. Now, I'm going to get myself, I tell down south, I would assume, to give David the news. Behold, Saul leaned upon his sword. Chapter 31, verse 4. And this is a great contradiction. Psalm, I mean, Psalm, 1 Samuel 31, 4. Then says Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith. Least these uncircumcised come and thrust me through, and abuse me. But as his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Well, one place says a sword, and this guy says a spear. That's a contradiction we need to throw the Bible out. You tell me this guy can't lie? This guy, what his motive is, he's going to David and he's thinking, Hey, Saul was your enemy. And if I tell you he's dead, I am going to make you so happy. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to go further with my lie. I'm going to say I killed him myself. He's already lied by the spear. And to the chariots and the horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, as both he saw, he saw me and called unto me. And I answered and said, here, here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. First Samuel 15, you're supposed to get rid of all those. At the death of Saul, according to this man, we don't know, we can't, he's already going to lie once, he's going to lie again. But supposedly Saul's last words, besides to his armor bearer, which I don't know if we can believe, is he's standing before a man that God said, get rid of. Kill them all. Women, children, males, all their animals. And he kept the best and kept Agag. I don't know how much that would be, but that would be God. Here, Saul is dying where knows what Samuel told him. You're going to be where I am 
24 hours, and the last thing Saul would see would be an Amalekite. And maybe that reminded him in his heart or his head. That's the ones that God told me to get rid of. That's the ones where I got into trouble. And he said unto me, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, which means kill me, and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. And the Bible says in Samuel, 1 Samuel 31, he was sore wounded. So here's a lie, definitely. I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live. After that, he was born. Well, the Holy Spirit told us that Saul leaned upon the sword and took the sword and took his life. He's lying because he wants favor from David. And I took the crown that was upon his head. And the bracelet, that's the first and last time bracelet shows up. The bracelet that was on his arm it would be a royalty, it would be a kind of seal. This bracelet was said, I'm the king. Brought thither unto my Lord. So he's carried the crown and the bracelet to David. And tells him about, I would think that this was purposely done. And brought it hither unto my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and rent them. And likewise all the men that were with him. See, Saul wasn't David's enemy. David was Saul's enemy. David cared for Saul. And Jonathan and his family. He never once sought revenge. He never once declared a battle against Saul. Saul did that. And at the moment he hears that Saul and especially Jonathan are dead, he's grieved. He's upset. Not because, you know, he didn't die early. The fact is, he has died. And, and likewise, all the men that were with him. And they mourned. And wept and fasted unto even 6 p.m. for Saul and for Jonathan his son. Now that's not a fast, you know, because they're dead. That's a fast, you know, Lord, I enjoyed their company for their family, their stew, you know, daughters. David was married to one of his daughters. The kingdom now is in ruckus. There are two anointed kings and one of them is dead now. And David's going to be stepping up to the plate as the king of Israel in the next one. And we are fasting because not they're dead, but a lot has happened now. And David needs a good, clean heart and mind for what's going to happen next. And they fasted unto even. For Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord... And for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And it's, it's a fast too, you know what? We lost. We shouldn't have lost. And David knows in his heart the reason why they lost is because of Saul. Look how many people have died because of Saul. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. They were supposed to be dead, 1 Samuel 15. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thy hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? That man is a king. He's been oiled by Samuel, the priest, by God. And the authority, what did you do by killing him? And you say, well, he didn't kill him. Contradiction. He opened up his big fat mouth. And when he opens up his mouth and declares something, you're guilty. And Jesus says in Matthew that we will give an account of every idle word. Be careful what you say. Be careful of your lies. They will come back to haunt you. If not by man, 
definitely by God. And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. Death for death. This man, by his words, did not kill Saul in battle. He held a suicide. That's not right. These people say, well, what about helping someone, you know, die peacefully and all that? This is what this guy claimed. It's a lie. But David said, go slay him. But the more chance of that is the fact is, that's the king. You don't do that to the king. That is God's anointed. You got to pay the price. So this man would wake up in hell where Saul is. And they're still there today. Now the date given here is 1056 BC. That's 1056 years plus 2018. Over 3000 years these guys are still in hell burning and in torment. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. There's no trial needed. He walked up to David and said, I did it. With everybody around. And you don't do that. Witness above David and everyone there that this man opened up his big mouth and condemned himself and David lamented for with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow before it was written in the book of Jasher now don't go looking for the book of Jasher the Holy Spirit said there's a book of Jasher but that's not in our Bible you don't need to go looking for it. And that little footnote is Saul and Jonathan taught the children of Judah how to use the bow. That's a that's in the parentheses. That's important. You gotta watch out for bowmen in the Bible. Archer. Nimrod was the first one to be mentioned. Uh, Esau was a cunning hunter. Something about those hunters. Something about those archermen. And the beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? Look at that beauty. Talking about Saul and Samuel. Tell it not in Gath. That's the Philistine area. Don't tell them. It's probably already been told, David. Publish it not in the streets of Asklon. That's the other city of the Philistines. They've taken, what David doesn't know is they've taken their bodies and nailed them to the wall outside Asherah's house. Uh, that city was Beth Shan. David doesn't know that this part. He's like, oh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell the enemy. Too late. Least the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Now, why did David say that? Did not David sing to his thousands he killed? And, I mean, ten thousands, and Saul sang to his, his thousands? <laughs> Isn't that something that David's been following him all his life? The, the children, the daughters, singing praises. And they would be singing the praises. Saul and Jonathan had been killed, whatever the words would be. Rejoice. You don't want them to rejoice. The enemies rejoicing over God's people losing. At least the daughters of the circumcised triumph. That's uncircumcised triumph. That's the first time that word shows up. David's like, this is a shame to the children of Israel. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offering. For there the shield of the mighty in violently, violently, that's the first and last time that word shows up. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Cast away the shield of Saul. Where is the shield of Saul? 
It's in some Philistine, Philistine's hand. Remember, they went and stripped the slain. They removed the clothing of Saul and fastened his body to the wall. Someone's got the shield of Saul. It's a it's a war duty. It's a war duty. It's look what I got. Well, who is that? That's the king of Israel, Saul. Wow, where'd you get that? Found his body on the, dead in the ground, and I got this. Look at this belonging to Jonathan. As though he had not been anointed with oil. And he was. What well, David's saying, he's just a, a common man. He shouldn't have died in battle, but yet, dying in battle would be a great. A lot of the warriors, a lot of the leaders of nations, to die in that in that battle. For the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan churned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. They had victories. They won battles. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. Remember, Jonathan should have been there. They were swifter, first time that word shows up, then eagles, that's the first time that word shows up. And they were stronger than lions. And eagles are quick when they're going down for the prey. When they put themselves into that dive and they're going down to get that mouse, man, it, it is fast. And what's stronger than a lion? Once you get in that lion's claws and his mouth, you're almost doomed, if not doomed. Ye daughters of Israel, Weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, rich colors, with other delights, first time that word shows up, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel riches. Saul took care of the women. He dressed them fine. He gave them jewels. How art the mighty fallen in the midst of battle? Oh, Jonathan, thou was slain in thy high places up on a mountain i am distressed for thee my brother look at my brother jonathan they are two different tribes benjamin and judah look how close they are that's my brother that's my conrad in arms very pleasant has thou been unto me thy love to me was wonderful passing the love of women and that's where now they will get perverted Oh, Jonathan and David had a sexual relation. Absolutely not. David and Jonathan in war has gone through something that no wife has gone through. These brothers, well, brothers, brothers again, they have seen things. They have been through things. They probably saved each other's lives. They probably protected each other. They watched out for each other because the enemy doesn't care. They would want them dead. Passing the love of women. How art the mighty fallen. And the weapons of war. Perish. And that's David. He, he's, he's upset. And sadly upset. They're dead. He had nothing to do with it. And the one that said he did have something to do with it. You're dead. 